This week on Horse Racing Journeys, we will have leading rider at Turfway Park, Brazilian born Luan Machado, to talk about his journey in the horse racing industry. So check us out! 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 Away Together is all about enhancing the guest experience from the hotel to exploring everything the destination has to offer. Away Together brings the culture and the history of a location alive to the traveler who is seeking to immerse themselves in a truly authentic local experience while on vacation. Journeys is sponsored by the Horseman's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario, which represents thoroughbred owners and trainers and their hardworking employees at Woodbine and Fort Erie racetracks. The HPPA represents horse people's interests in all issues pertaining to thoroughbred racing. The HPPA's goal is for the betterment of racing at all levels, from medical and pension plans to negotiating with government and racetrack operators. Your HBPA is at the forefront of all issues important to members. Please visit the HBPA at hbpa.on.ca or on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, HBPA Ontario. The next race day at the Garza Savannah will be the 30th of April. Bring your family and enjoy a day of racing. Journeys. Mr. Hall. What's going on? Boy, I'm home, boy. Oh. I'm home. I'm home, man. I got in two o'clock this morning. Wow. Man, I got in that bed and I hug it for as long as I can, man, to feel like it says, hey, I'm home, but I'm home. That bed wow. felt so good, man, you know? Yeah, so I'm home. Wow. That's that's the thing. How are you doing? Well, everything's great. I can't complain. I have life. I'm smiling. Yeah, praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. You know yeah. what I mean? We had um, entries today. We have races on the 13th pair at the Garson, so... Our entries today had two entry two, so I got two runners on that day. Oh, well, good luck, good luck. Looking forward. You know, hopefully, well, hopefully, something good can happen for you, and that's what it's all about, right? Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. and we had some good racing last weekend. We can talk, touch on that a little later on the show. Yes. Yes. Time for yes. the X Man. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we know they had some good racing last week, and you know what I mean. We'll we'll mm -hmm. touch on that a little later on the, in the show. You know what I mean? So, but before I go any further, I want to shout out a, a, a good buddy of mine. They're the real players. Yes. Send me these hats here, man. Oh. So I got to show, I got to shout him out. You know, he sent me four of them, man. Whoa. Yeah. The real players. That's my boy. Old New York. You know, that's what it, that's yes. what's on the front of them. You know what I mean? Yes. And I got to, yes. I, I got to, I got to represent him. So he make I got to show them out. You know what I mean? Don't real hide players. the plug. Yeah. The real players don't hide the plug. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I, I gotta show them out, and I'm working on getting him on the show. But he's working on something big too, so we gotta yeah, show them out also because he does some great work for the horse people. You know the backstretch. You know his his things about the people in the backstretch. So, yes. and he does a wonderful job, and I support him 100. percent You know what I mean? So Correct. keep up the good work, my man. You know, so yes. yeah. So when he sent me those hats, man, I, I was I talked to him a while ago, and I said, man, I need some of those hats, man, and he he shipped them to me, man. Wow. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I got them within like two or three days or something like that. So that oh. was wonderful. 
Yeah, yeah I saw a show where he, he would you know doing the hats and thing. Got some really nice hats, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. kinds. So, and I'm a hat man, so you know I get to to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right. Well, that that so Jen is having a little issue getting on tonight so far. Yeah, she's having a little problem. I haven't seen her come back on as yet. Um, but okay. you no, know, she's she's. She should get on. I think she yeah. is rebooting. All right. Well, she'll she'll on. on, and we'll get to see her. We'll get to see them funny man a little later and stuff like oh, that. I, I think she just came on. She just came on. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a, then, I'm a, I don't see her there, but she's she's on. She's on. Okay. She did it. She did it. And our Canadians are, are are getting ready. Get it ready at Woodbine. Things are starting to heat up up there. A lot of horses. Are, I'm watching the worksheet every day now. So a lot of horses are. are what are you laughing at? Was so funny. I just guy Ned, man. Oh, Ned, Ned. Ned. Guy Ned. <laughs> What's Ned. he saying now? What's he saying? But you said the duck can't help her. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, can't help her. Can't help her. Sorry. Yeah, he's hanging oh, around man. Mike too much, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so our Canadians are, are getting ready up here. Are watching the worksheet every day. You know, my jock is getting busy up here too. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, guys, you, you can't get in the place, warm up for the tiny summer for everybody. Like, we're going to have a, a good opening time in the way the, the guys are handling the, the workers and everything. The weather is kind of cooperating. We're getting some bad rain right now, but we got a poly track, so that doesn't stop the poly track, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, that doesn't matter. So, you know what I mean, they won't get the train on the training track, but at least they still get to go on up the main track and, and work so and stuff. It's no yeah. snow then. It's no snow. No snow. So they call for some snow, but uh, hopefully it's not as much, you know what they're saying. So hopefully it just stays the rain. I know I got some rain driving up from Kentucky yesterday myself too. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? And I got my man, I got the old man down in uh, at Gulfstream you know, working some horses. He was at Palmetto's working some horses there yesterday too. I mean, this morning, sorry, from, you know, yeah. for Saturday and and for for Mark, you know what I mean. So, so keep it busy. He's going to be writing then. He's going to be writing. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a, he's writing Friday. He's writing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, he's already booked with some calls. Going to get to write already. Yeah, I got him set oh, up and everything. So things are rolling good. So right. we're trying to just give Jen a little time to come on here. But Hammer, you got that? You got that little bit? Did you send that thing to Hammer for me, or did he get it to, it to put it up? I sent it. Hammer, you, you got a little bit to put up there for me early or no? If you can't, we can do that later. Mm -hmm. Just trying to give Jen a little time to get on here so we we get going. Obviously, the one with Patrick. Yeah. Jenny. Oh, ah. there's Jen. Okay, great. All right. Oh, you got here. You. All right, Jen. All right. How's it going, Jen? No, oh my gosh, I can't. Nothing's working. <laughs> Nothing's working. I don't know. It works every week, and then I go to turn it on tonight. Now we had we had record winds here mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the last twenty four hours, and there was I had all kinds of computer problems today. Wow. But um, yeah, so I don't know how long this is gonna stay on for. I had to re. Oh no, now what's it doing? I had to reboot like three times, and it just. One minute I didn't have a camera. One minute I didn't have a microphone. One minute I didn't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're on, so it is good. You're on, so it is good. So hey, let's not keep this the the man waiting any longer. He's a champ, and let's look, the ex, the ex man. Let's the not keep man, the man waiting man. anymore. So that being said, Hammer, bring on our guest, the champ one, the ex man. <laughs> Jock, how's it going, man? Sean, you're okay. on Hey, so you, you know me, guys. I like to start this show. Oh, before I go, Jen, Luana, and Luana, Jen, and you. I mean, Hi, Luana. How are you doing? Congratulations. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Four, was that four years in a row you've been leading rider? No, no, in a no, row. no, no, no. Two years in a row, yeah. and uh, I've been once to uh, 2019. Was a, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Very yeah. good. Well, wow. welcome to the show. It's uh, yes, we have to introduce who he is. Okay. Go ahead, Leroy. Introduce who he is. <laughs> okay, so let me introduce you. Know me, I'm the stats man on here. So before I go any further, they cheat him out of 300 wins that he win not in North America. So I'm going to add those on to his North American wins. Okay, so his okay. North American, he's got 3,096 um, starts. 
490 North American wins plus 300. So we're giving him 790 wins altogether in his, his writing career, right? 388 oh. seconds, 378 thirds, um, four, four mil, 14,759,903 um, er, purse earnings, 16 per win percent, and a 41 in the money percent. His best year so far is, 20, is 2023, which is 289 starts. 62 wins, which we did this season. It was 34 mm -hmm. seconds, 41 wins, and 2,355,577 with a 21 win percent and a 48, 47 in the money percent. Wow. So that, that was that was pretty damn good of him too, right? So wow. and yeah. So that that's that's how we that's what we're looking at right now. So we can't steal, we can't cheat him out of his, those wins that he had. You know what I mean? And in 2023, because he's only been in North America four years, right, Doc? Yes. Uh, four years. So, so in, yeah, yeah four, four years. So in the four years, he was ranked in 2023 with in in uh, wins 90 in North America and in, in the whole jockey's uh, economy and with earn wins and 40, 40th with money earnings mm -hmm. for the four years he's been here. You like those stats, Jock? I love it. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank okay. You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's me as the stats man. So, guys, you guys can carry it away from here. Mm. Well, one thing I would like to ask you, where do you get the name Axe Man from? Where did that come from, man? Because everybody seems to love that name because everybody was talking about the Axe Man is on and that kind of stuff. Tell me. Yeah, who started this was uh, my first Asian. He, he was also the the guy that called the race uh, okay. for years at Turfway Park. That was Jimmy McNerney. Uh -huh. And much and Axe is my last name meaning in Portuguese. Oh. Machado means axe uh -huh. in English. Ah, okay. That's that's why. That's why you got okay. Wow. And he started that's calling me axe man. So then uh last year the guy at Keenland started calling me X Men too, and then they they went from there, and <laughs> now they all call me X Men. My kid's a good, it's a good nickname to have, though. My kid's cool. It is cool. I I like yeah. it too. Yeah, yeah, it's all real cool. Yeah, okay, so starting. So I see here your family. There's nothing but jockeys in your family. Call your father started. So let's get you started with where you started and how you got into the game, and and go from there, Jock. Oh, I, a bit of your, your your journey from your history starting off. Mm -hmm. Well, my daddy started when he was a kid. He was about nine because in there is some no official racetracks in Brazil. I, I, I guess every every country has this no official tracks. We call the bushy tracks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they well my dad my daddy started as a nine years old. They used to use a lot of kids because the mm -hmm. kids are, are lighter and they have no weight. Mm -hmm. So when lighter you can get, I, I guess the faster the horse can run. Mm -hmm. And then my dad became a professional, but he didn't ride for too long. He was, uh, he was big, he was too heavy. Mm -hmm. For about seven years as a professional. Mm -hmm. And then he, he quit riding, he started working with his family with cars and we, we didn't know that he was a jockey until we were, I would say, until we were like eight years old. Wow. And my brother was six. And uh, so we want to know more about it. We, uh -huh. we were very curious about it. So then we started, my dad bought a, a two ponies horse. I mean, so a uh, nice horse. Uh, I mean, not nice, but they were cheap. But yeah. they would do... They, they were they were kind of wide because they were too cheap. They didn't know. <laughs> but, but, but those horses taught us how, uh, taught taught us how how to ride, oh. and we were becoming good and good and good. So then we we decided we want to ride too races, oh. and we started on those same same uh, now official tracks, mm. and that was pretty fun. I, I my first race was I was about to turn twelve years old. Wow. I will try to look at some pictures to for Leroy to 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 show you guys later. <laughs> how, how how little we were. 
<laughs> and so then I started before, and then about a year later, my brother started, uh, he, he wanted to do the same. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started. And we, we couldn't, when we were riding on this, <coughs> these races, we, we used to ride every weekend, every weekend. The school mm -hmm. during the week, and riding every weekend, and we rode for in whole in whole state of Brazil. Mm. We go, we went everywhere riding those kind of horses and yeah, those, those kind of races. Mm. And uh, and then we couldn't wait until we get old enough to to go to the job school. Okay. And, and become a professional. I always thought well, I would go and become a professional jockey. Uh, a real race track. The question I will let ask you though, because you said your dad was got big. How is your weight? Do you have any weight problems? Do you have to struggle to to, to keep your weight down? Yeah, uh, I, I I I ride pretty good on one twenty. I can do it. Mm. I had to lose a little still, but uh, I can do it. And uh, now in the summer, I sometimes I'm I'm able to do eighteen. Okay. So wow. yeah, but I don't. So do how, tall, how tall? How tall are you? I am five seven. Wow. Yeah, well, I'm, not very, I'm not too little. <laughs> no, I'm five eight. That's what I'm trying to say. You close, you're close to me, man. <laughs> yeah, but you look what? like you were strong. You got some. I don't. I'm very skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's skinny. He's tall, but he's skinny. He's skinny. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I was a little big. Yeah. yeah. I want to yeah. pivot back to. I want to pivot back to something I was reading too. Like when you were writing, your brother came over and just to to, to visit you, and then within like a couple of days, you, they had him riding horses. Oh, he already knew how to ride. Like he. Oh, okay. With, With the pony. Or, oh, okay. But in regular horses, not racing horses. Oh, and okay. then he came to visit me for a week. And when my dad came came over to pick him up like two weeks later, he was breezing horse with me. It's the way he started to. And then in about a month later, he rolled his first race. He was he was fast. Wow. wow. So it, he's I I I met him um uh, down here with you when you showed me him one morning because he was he came back so he stopped riding too but because of his weight also right yes he quit riding because he couldn't handle the the way he is uh he's the same taller than me uh, may, maybe a little taller than me but his his body's different mm. yeah. he's more like sean <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and you also have a kid brother also that's riding also back home too that's an yeah, apprentice the, right now yeah the younger one no he already professional Oh, okay. Well, he's already professional. professional okay. Last year, and uh, he's doing good right now. He's doing good. He's mm -hmm. he's in third in the in the stand and the, in the how do you call it? and the standings. Standings. Yeah. Okay. So so you did so much in in Brazil. How was you know coming from Brazil to North America for the first time? How was how do you how do you adapt to that so quickly? Uh, yeah. I I I adapt so quick because i had some some good support when they come when they came mm -hmm. uh who invited me was wesley so wesley ward well yeah to he invited me to ride the winter time for him it's wow. a turf way and he got the asian and everything set up for me because oh, did that happen yeah that happened because he watched me winning the biggest race Bridge. in brazil at 2000 yeah. uh -huh. and uh yeah. after that race he called Another Brazilian rider that rides here that you guys might know him is Leandro Goncalves. Okay. And uh, okay. Leandro called a friend in Brazil to talk to me, uh, asking if I wanna if I was interested to come here. And I said, Yeah, of course. And uh, that's that's how I uh, that was easier for me because I was riding some good horses when I got here. Wow. And I have some good wow. good support. Good support. That helped I mean, me out to, to start. Yeah, I mean, to start up with Wesley Ward, that's, wow, that's top, top notch there, man. Yeah. You, you won a group one race in Brazil, the biggest um, race in Brazil, that's a, the biggest race in Brazil. Yes. Okay. So I just want to pivot back a little bit, because you say you went into the writing school when you were down there. 
Mm-hmm. And and then before you came to, to North America. And, you know, I know we talk about writer's school, and this is something that Sean is very interested in, in writer's school and trying to teach youngsters, stuff like that. I mean, how much did going to the writer's school help you before you were able to come to North America? Did that did a lot for you? It, it did. Uh, we in, in Brazil we had to be in the job school for about two years, hmm. like as apprentice. N- not anymore. They just they just changed it the way it is. It was the way it was before. Now it's now you gotta have uh, seven wins so you become a professional. Before we, we didn't have a limit. We had like year and eight months as apprentice. You could win how many ratio you you were able to and. That was 2011 when I got in the job school. Yeah. 2011, 2012. But in the middle of the, my, in the middle of 2012, my, you know, I, I had like about a year and three months as apprentice. I I gave up my jockey career, and uh, I was apprentice first. Uh, First category of friends, I was only taking a uh, four pounds, I guess. No, no, two pounds. Mm-hmm. The last stage of the friends, almost becoming a jockey. Right. Uh, that was kind of business was going down a little bit. Uh, and I was struggling a little bit with the weight too. Mm-hmm. And uh, I gave up. I gave up completely. I was eight months off until wow. I got back in the horse. And uh, yeah, I was, I gave up to ride. I was 145 pounds when wow. I was right. Wow. Yeah. And Have then I, I, I said, I can't handle this. I, I, I have to go back. I mean, it's a, you, you guys know how it is when you get on this kind of, mm-hmm. the business, it's kind of, you, you, you don't want to do anything else. You yeah, yeah, wanna, yeah. Work with horse doesn't matter how training, riding, galloping. Yeah, you got you want you want to be uh, you want to be around this, mm. right? And uh, I came back and uh, everything changed. I, I, I guess uh, that was good for me. The time off. Do you think success riding helps you control your weight? Where you tend to like um, no, not about a success. You just you tend to get more disciplined. Then you know what I mean. And you do. It's true. Yeah. It is. And then uh, in the class of uh, Leroy, uh, the jock school helped a lot because uh, it's not even it's, it's not about how to ride or those kind of things you get on the way. I mean, the experience when more you ride, watching good riders, it's kind of trying to get a little bit of everybody and to try to be as complete as you can. Mm-hmm. Nobody's perfect, but we, we try to be uh try to be complete as a jockey but mm-hmm. okay i i want i want there's a lot of different things you're learning there how to be a a good person too i guess mm-hmm. right like in the writing school do they do they teach you about um how to manage your money and how to to kind of like um socialize with people and not speak properly and that kind of stuff but a mic and that kind of stuff. You do all of that in your in right school in Brazil? Yes, they they try, <laughs> they try, <laughs> they try. Like they keep part of your money until you become professional. Okay. They keep seventy percent of all your money. They keep in a banking account, safe uh-huh. bank account, so you can you can touch it. Okay. And they give you thirty percent to just to to leave to, to manage it. Yeah. Yeah. Until you become professional. And they kind of saved some people because if that was not if that was not the case, I would have no money when I left the job school. I would be broke as, as I started. <laughs> and that helped me a lot. <laughs> okay, so because the, the one the, re- the big reason I really asked you that question, you know what I mean? Because we have so many youngsters coming into the game today, Jock, you know. Yeah. 
and and one of the things i love on this show for myself personally is trying to attract young people into this game because we're lacking a lot of people in this game a lot of people all the guys are leaving and we're not don't have enough people coming into it and i want them to get a little understanding when they for this game i mean like jen herself she just she 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 does her writing and stuff like that for the last couple of weeks she decided to pick a shank back up and start by walking a few horses to get herself you know doing things again yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> so for the young well, people, people need and, help back there people and, i mean the back stretch is like yeah. you know people need help so yeah we don't have no but help I, in the back stretch anymore and i always try to ask these questions for guys like yourself that been in north america four years you become a, a champion and you this is not your first championship you won but you're talking about your your journey from how you got where you where you were to where you are and being in that writing school, if you had to pick out two very important things from that writing school, what would it be for you personally? It's a good question. Mm. I don't know if you did from the writing school, but the school before the writing school would be with my dad. My dad was the guy that was uh, guiding Guiding, guiding us. Yeah. The best way is uh, a a mentor. Say, more as a, a mentor. He was a mentor to you more than yeah. anything else. He was him mm -hmm. and my brother. There was the we were like together all the time, and mm -hmm. that's where I learned learn more. <sighs> but two things. I mean, you first thing if you are not in passion with this this business of this profession you don't even start it you gotta you gotta love it if you know yeah, right i mean it's not even a, a point yeah. to, to keep going mm -hmm. and i would say you gotta prove yourself every day too to mm -hmm. yourself not to anybody else but it's a game that you gotta prove it every day if you don't if you don't try to prove your, or getting better every day you're gonna they will, they will forget you 100%. that's right yeah they will forget you 100 percent. you gotta be yeah. showing up and showing that you're still in learning and getting better and better so that's one yeah. of the things and i think i mean i guess uh when you learn that everything everybody's the same here and you treat everybody the same do the right thing and the right thing is gonna come back to you sooner or later so Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing for me. Well, that's great. Thank you for for saying that because I've I've we had a little conversations with you come and work in horses for me and we 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 spoke about you know life in general and stuff like that and I I got a taste of your competitive edge because that part, one of those particular mornings you were kind of hard on yourself because you felt that you could have done better in a situation that you were in in a race and and you know we got talking about it so that show me your competitive edge that you kind of look at you where you what you can do better and how, how much better you want to be and being a champion it shows why you are a champion for me mm -hmm. you know what I, mean? you. I have a lot, a lot of respect for you for that because i we only met this year for the first time and we had a really nice conversation we we're just talking horseman to horseman and hey i i gotta take my hat off to, to you buddy thank you Leroy. you know yeah Wow. Go ahead, Jen. Come on, Jen. You got a lot to say there. Don't be holding it back, Jen. Me? Well, no, I, no, I just, um, you know, I marvel at um, Luan's, um, you know, fast rise. Uh, you know, mm. just looking at his statistics, we're talking about uh, numbers here, and um, just your fast rise into, you know, one of the most prominent riders, certainly in Kentucky. I, you know, I, you, you, the, the circuit's now moved to Keeneland. Um, and now you're going to be riding on the dirt and the turf. Um, you know, I guess I want to ask you, first of all, um, being so familiar with, uh, Polytrack at Turfway, um, I usually ask all of our riders this, this question. Do you have a, a, a favorite surface that you ride on? Like, do you like the, the, uh, Tapita or do you like the main track, the dirt, the turf, or does it, uh, does it not I matter to you? I do like the tapira, but it is not my favorite track. My favorite track is the turf. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the horse go faster. <laughs> they you don't get more dirt, and they <laughs> yeah. And they, when they take that dirt on their face, they you have to be 
on them all the time for them mm. not to to give it up or right so my favorite track is the turf my second favorite track is the tapeta and then yes. dirt for less i would say <laughs> and my favorite track is king that track i i really love that it's a special oh. place for me and why why is it special i mean i think um well i'll tell you why it's special because i've seen i was at keeneland a couple of years ago for the breeders cup i saw you win on a horse that's got to be one of your favorite horses because you also won a graded stake in new york and that's the big gray horse next next yeah he's a special horse for me yeah, yeah he, he he is just an incredible horse uh, you two go way back and um tell me about that horse i mean Obviously, the longer the distances, the better for him, and and you two just became this incredible combination. Um, what's the secret to next? I see he's been working steadily, so he's got to be coming back soon. But what was what what makes the two of you click so much? And you know, how do you get him to go a mile and three quarters? Well, next uh, is a long story about next because when he when uh, the training about him. Uh, he ran him right back in a claiming 50,000. 50, they, they knew they were good, but they they didn't know how good he was. And at that point, that was the right race for him to win. I mean, so he didn't get claimed. That is, I was surprised about that. And I didn't ride him at that point. So then I started grizzing him. Whoop. <laughs> no, I gotta make sure. I gotta make sure my little boy is not something's dropped on me. Is that something from the laundry room? Okay, <laughs> he's okay. He's just the baskets. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Hey, so then I got on him for the first time at Churchill Downs to breathe him one morning, and he was going to breathe five eights. Uh, I breathed him five eights. I couldn't pull him up into the three eights again. He went almost all the way to the to this to the stretch again, <laughs> and uh, well, as soon as I pulled him up, I turned him around and he started bucking, <laughs> and he breathes a minute flat, Leroy, at Churchill Downs, a minute flat, and that wasn't about like the eighth lane. Like, I mean, I was wide because yeah. the track was already too <laughs> loose in the inside, and I want to give him a a, a, a good surface too. You know, to, to strike comfortable. And he went a minute flat. He, I couldn't pull him up into the three eights again. And he turned us around and he was so happy to do that. I said, this guy is something different. He's something special. I mean, as soon as I got back to the... To the, to the uh, to barn? To the barn? To the barn, yeah, to the barn. I told the training, I think this guy can run forever. I... I I think he's going to uh, he's going to give you some fun to to the summer, and he said, "Yeah, let's let's give him a shot at Delaware, going a mile. I think there was a mile and three eight at that day mm -hmm. at Delaware. And then the 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 the, the the race was supposed to be on the turf, but it rained so much that that they changed the track, they switched to the dirt." Yeah, and they they were about to scratch the horse, and a night before he called me saying that they they take the the turf off and the you're off going to the dirt, and I say, well, I think that's even better, and he said, well, we are the only one happy, you know the the connection, the owner, the train, the groom, the the assistant, you're the only one happy. I said, well. <laughs> The horse can breeze a minute, <laughs> go all the way to the street eight, turn around and he's happy bucking. I think he he, he must like it a little bit. <laughs> well, he broke the track record that day. Yes. Wow. You by 11. You went by 11. Yeah. Oh, no, at Delaware. By 18. No, no. 18 or something. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 lanes. 18 lanes, yeah. But that, you know what? Since you're saying that, because this, this is not, it's not the first time it happened to him. When he ran before and he come off the turf, he did the same thing. He ran and he went by 10. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. I just want to give my look. I'm going to let you finish your story. But, Jane, have you seen the size of this horse? He's a tiny little thing. 
A tiny little thing. Yeah. It's a tiny little thing. I know, you know, I know. You know, you know, and I watch him in the morning, and he has to stand up there for however long he wants to stand before he moves. You can't get him to move. Yeah. Yeah, no, I up. said the big horse because I was joking. Because no, I was at the Breeders' <laughs> Cup when he won the Thurbert Aftercare Alliance Stakes, and uh, I was just like, "Wow!" And uh, I became a big fan of the horse that day. And, and he broke his mate. He broke his mate and goes six and a half. Yeah, small the but mighty. Yes, uh, Marianne again <laughs> says the horse is small but mighty. That's right, he is. And then, um, then he took you to New York, right? That was last year. Last year, yes. It, we went to at first. We we went to Belmont. The Brooklyn handicap, the right? Brooklyn. Yes, and then he won easy Whoa. too. And then we get some fast horses. He won the Brooklyn the, handicap. Huh? Yeah, yeah. This, he's a monster, Sean. He won the the no, he no, because I I, I went. No, I went to New York to run social charity in the Brooklyn handicap. So I, I, I know that race. I went there in, in Belmont. I mean, 1999. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm familiar with the race. Yeah, then he won that race easy, and then he came wow. back at, at Saratoga, and they thought that we wouldn't get the comfortable trip because they had two super fast horses in the race, and uh -huh. then I lay third. I went third, second, third, second, and he won easier than ever. Wow. He won by 11 lengths yeah, that day. 11 by 11. <laughs> that was a mile and three quarters. Mile yeah. and three quarters, that's right. Yeah. They cannot oh. keep his, his pace. Dash He's attack, very, dash very attack. consistent. Yeah. Ortiz Road, dash attack in that race, finished third, and time for a trouble mm -hmm. finished second in the race. Mm -hmm. But then tell us, mm -hmm. the sloppy track at Parks in September, his last start of last year. I mean, it's just hilarious, you know? It I mean, he was, he was 30 cents on the dollar, so he was expected to win. But yeah. tell tell Sean how many lengths you won by that day. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> 25. 25. 25. 25. 25 lengths. And, oh, and yeah. that was the easiest win ever because... I knew he was going so comfortable, and that was so wide because that, we had so many water on that track that day. Yeah. And I said, yeah. uh, don't worry, but we are not going to get in the water. I'm going to take you clear. And, <laughs> and that went so wide. When I checked on the guys, they went through the water. <laughs> and I said, well, I, I guess I can start pulling you up because it's done. And they were done. You, and you took a hundred... You took 126 pounds in the race. Uh huh. Yes, 126. Wow. wow. And he won and easy. So he, Sean, he's rode him. He's rode him six times and won five on him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so he's going to be running soon, I guess, eh? Uh, I get. I I would say he's going to go back at the same race he got beat. Okay, that would be. Let's see. Mighty, mighty marathon. Next month, yeah, in May, they run on May 3rd last year. May 3rd, yeah, Churchill Downs, right? Yes. Churchill oh, Downs. right, the Isaac Murphy the Marathon, Marathon. Right. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I think one of the races that he ran last year that is not coming back, that is not going to be up. I can't remember which one is it. There's one of oh. the best, there's one of, that, yeah, there is one, they yeah. might run it. They might run it. Uh, I think this Belmont one. They are doing something in the track. Brooklyn, the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And that one is not going to run because I know I was talking to the assistant trainer and he said that race is not going to be there. So he's going to miss that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might be on Kentucky Derby Day, uh, the Isaac Murphy, maybe. Either Kentucky Derby Day or Oaks Day, it's going to be, I think. Yeah, that's right. It, it was in Oaks Day last year. Oaks Day, okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and then and then he got beat, he ran third, but he was coming from a layoff and he was too, too, too sharp. Oh, yeah, he, yes, he was too aggressive the first part, and like I kind of knew that would happen. He was, I, I was feeling him too, too strong in the morning, too aggressive. Well, but coming from a layoff, I, I guess it's normal, right. Yeah. They, How are you going to fix that this year, though? Because he's going to be coming off a layoff. They're going to have to, they should 
blow them out uh, three eighths and thirty three or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, last week he just breathed a mile. <laughs> yeah. You know you'll be breathing him every week. Yeah. If they're doing like a uh, very tight schedule on him, breathing him in s with the now they're gonna get it longer, but they did for a while seven and seven days, and they responded very well with the those breezes. And, well, that's uh, good. It's nice to have a favorite horse, isn't it? I'm sure you have lots of favorite horses, but he's I'm sure he's one of your favorites. Oh, he's definitely my favorite, my number one horse for now. It, uh, mm. He also helped me on the getting the next next step. I mean, he was the horse that, that brought me, that sh put me in the map. Give, yeah. you, the expo give you the exposure to, to, yeah. to everybody. Yes. Yes. And, well, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 He's run he's 19. Huh? He's run 19 times, win nine. He's got 915,673 in the bank. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's almost pretty good. Yeah, he's we almost like the money. Yeah. Yeah, and you, I mean, six six starts on him and win five, so it's amazing. Uh, I can't believe it was so when I first see him at Turf and I see the size of him, I was like, "That's the little horse that goes that can't stop." You know, he can't like, be true. Huh? <laughs> I, I can't believe it. If somebody had told me that was him before, not knowing him, I was like, "No way. There's no way that's him." And just watching him, you know. But hey. That's what that's what resources are all about. Is what's the heart, not the size, right? That's right. Yeah. Heart and lungs, huh? Because then yeah. this guy can go forever. The engine that never stops going. It's wow. Now you so you ride you ride him, and he's long distance and on the pace and and measuring. You know, you have to measure his speed and make sure that you know he gets the distance and all that. But is that what, what would you say that your strength is um, as a rider? Do you um do you think you're good at judging pace do you do you win a lot of races on the lead going you know a mile mile 16th or do you like taking your horses back from off the pace what's your what's your best strength do you think as a jockey i would say that's my main thing the judge the pace and yeah I, in another life they asked me if i would sell myself what would i say and that was what i say i mean i i think uh, when I noticed that I was good at it, that was a game change in my career. I mean, when I was when I get confident enough to do what I think at the moment that in the race, well, depends on the situation. But when I decide to take my own decision about the pace or how fast we were going or how would it start, I mean, when I got it right, when I got the confidence to to do it. That was when everything started changing for me. And that's a hard thing to do. Like, I can't, you know, I mean, as someone who, you know, I enjoy betting on the races. You know, I like to write about them and work with horses and all that, but I like to bet on them. And the one thing that, you know, will drive me crazy is that, you know, get, you know, horses getting into a three horse speed duel or, or, you know, something like that, or a horse that, you know, is sort of taken out of his game. But, I mean, you sort of have to sometimes decide what you're going to do after the race starts, too. Like, you have to be thinking quick, right? Yeah, that's right. Sometimes the horse doesn't help us to yeah to do it uh, the way you want it to. Sometimes you just got to you ask them a little bit, uh, help them live in the gate a little bit, and they kind of run off, and you cannot control and right make us look bad. But yeah. It, well, Mm -hmm. Leroy, no, I work with my watch here all the time, and I yeah. go watching the pace. Even when I, when I don't need it, I just I just I love to make sure and be looking at it and feeling how the horses are responding about the pace or the way they like. I mean, and when you get on the horse next week, you know how he's feeling. You know if he likes the way you work last last time you you were on him. Uh, I think that's how I got it. Working with watch and, and taking the all the the form by form fast speed or time and yeah everything. In in, in Brazil we work with the watch too. The and the trainings oh, yeah. are very, very restricted. 
restricted with the yeah. yeah they really wanted to be on time oh okay mm, that's, that's hard. well i'm gonna you, you talk about the turf being your favorite surface and you talk about judging pace so you know i mean there was lots of races that i could have shown here um that you've ridden i could have showed you riding next but really you know just, <laughs> he goes to the lead and he wins by 25 lengths i gotta fall asleep you know yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show a race that i'm sure you've seen a million times because it's out there and it's you know i saw it last year it was keeneland i believe on the grass um and hammer is gonna cue it up for us um and we're gonna watch it i believe you're the number 10 horse here and i've already forgotten what her name is i think it's a filly but i'm not sure but um yeah hammer if you can cue that race up and we're gonna watch luan here in a grass race at keeneland last fall and um i'll just ignore this first part <laughs> <laughs> i stole it from somebody so oh okay yeah go yeah that's it hammer just keep scrolling through there Wait till it gets to the beginning part, blah, blah. Sometimes I have, to, whoa, there we go. Number go. 10. Let's watch this because this is crazy. I know what the race is that. Yeah, I'm sure you know what race it is. You can talk to the race, on, um, Jock, if you want, and talk a little bit Rats so we can hear you what you're thinking about the race. Yeah, you can say something there. They're off. There goes Imperial View well. from the she inside, well. but now yeah, around the sun. Yeah, you're forward. in the white, right? And around the sun, we'll yeah. have the lead as they I head for the first yeah, turn. Our Dotsy will go second. Charlie O stacks up and toward I, the outside. In third position, I, Empirical I mean, View is fourth down toward the inside. Are you on the rail in the back? Goes fifth out toward the yeah. center of the course, starts you're to angle down close to the rail now around the first turn. Condone goes in sixth. Olagata moves up from seventh against the rail with a ground saving trip around the first turn. Jenny Lind is wide out of the back stretch in eighth. Lakeside Music is ninth. Beach Walkin' is in 10th. Yeah, Beach you're on the rail in is 11th. Last, Yarborough last, last to the 12th right. opening quarter, 22.94 seconds. Up the back stretch, Around the Sun is the leader. Around the Sun with our dot C alongside. A half length separate the I top two midpoint of the back right stretch. Charlie O far outside, just off the leader's flanks in third. Empirical View yeah. is fourth back toward well, I, I the inside. Mint edition fifth on the outside, five lengths off the lead. Oligata is sixth him. against the rail. Jenny Lind is a wide Dude. seventh with the far turn. Dude and then Condone in eighth. Beach Walkin', Lakeside Music, Holy Foley, oh, yeah, Marlborough at the back, 48.45 seconds. The time for the first half mile. Around the Sun leading our dot C, Charlie O. The far turn in third, a length like, off the lead. It. Empirical view looks toward the inside <laughs> in fourth. Mint edition fifth. Olagata is still sixth against the rail. Quarter mile to go, six lengths off no, the lead. The they turn for home. Back. Around the sun, our Dotsy. Empirical view behind that pair, Charlie O. And now Olagata coming from the outside. Then Beach Walkin is in sixth. Our Dotsy, a narrow lead. Empirical view needs room to the inside of Around the Sun. Olagata still fourth in Beach Walkin. Right around the sun up the inside. And here comes Beach Walkin and Ola Gata. You still got our Dotsy there as well at the wire. It wow. is by the head bomb across the wire. Beach Walkin. Was the track wow. yielding a bit because it looked like it was the track was soft? Huh? It, 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 it was, was soft. It, it was, was soft. And the pace was not too slow. Uh, mm. It was not too fast. I mean, but, yeah. And uh, but I I didn't have a choice. I I didn't have anywhere to to keep moving. And she didn't have a kick out yeah. of the gate. She didn't help me to get in a, a better spot. I would, I, would, spot. I would rather, on the kind of pace, be right off the speed, not, not five lanes or four lanes off, off of the speed. So she didn't help me out at the first time. <laughs> so, and then she got around the bridle, and she dragged me all the way around to the carpool. And I was following wow. Gaffalion, and that was, that was what helped me out, too. When he made the room, mm -hmm. uh, riding the carpool, mm -hmm. I, I I didn't have a horse enough to follow him going. Mm -hmm. That's why I say I, I will have to ride her until inside until I see a, a I mean, so a clear a, a window open for me to get it through. And she also yeah. she never avoid to get into it. She helped me a lot. 
Well, yeah, I mean, just it looked oh. it looked like the 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 opening was getting narrower and narrower as you were getting closer <laughs> to the finish, and you're just like, Ooh. I mean, the track announcer had no idea what was going on there. It yeah. took them like took them like thirty <laughs> seconds to realize, oh, it's beach walking that one. Like it was so, it was just oh, it was just thrilling. Yeah. No, it and was, next uh, day, yeah. ne next day, I rode. Uh, we rode a mating race going along the mile sixteen in the turf. And Gaffalion beat me by a head. And I Whoa. almost beat him with a first time out against the favorite. And he was like, <laughs> when we crossed the rail, and he said, uh, I can't believe you again. And <laughs> <laughs> and I, said, I said, I almost got you, buddy. I almost got you. <laughs> I, I want to pivot back a little bit because about your pace and stuff like that when you were trying to Jen was asking those questions. And, and I want to regard this, 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 this question towards Turfway Park because a lot of people say it's a track that you have to be sitting close. It's a bit of a speed track. And how how do you explain what do you explain about Turfway Park? Uh, as, a, turf, as a rider, I did, they the days they say that the track was fast or the track the it was holding the speed. I never I, I never really put much uh, attention on it because everything I did was get where the horse was comfortable with. I never really. Try to make the lead with a horse that don't have enough speed to make it comfortable. That doesn't make much sense for me. Never did. And so what I did all the way from the first day was get where they could hold it and sit comfortable. Sometimes when they, they were, there was a lot of horse. I won, I won races with a speed horse, super speed horse coming from off the pace because there were so many people trying to get the lead. And they were getting so much trouble and fight on top that when I took a hole and I see comfortable and my heart ran back to me. So I think that was the thing at Turfway Park. Uh, that helped me a lot. Just get where the horse was com comfortable with and, and go from there. So you don't let, um, you know, sometimes, pe you know, people will say, or fans will say, oh, the track is speed biased, and this is after the third race. You don't let that kind of stuff get into your head and then try to force your horse to show speed, even though he's not a speed horse. You don't let that influence you. Yeah, I never, I try not to because uh never really work. I try. I, I've tried it was yeah. a couple of times, like trying to make the lead with a horse that didn't, he didn't really like it. And what happened? Carapo, I was going backwards. Horse really didn't like it. And so it didn't work for me at that point. So yeah. I, I, I just forgot it. And I always do what I feel like the horse can make it. What they can handle. Yeah. Now, do you look at, um, I like, do, you look, do you look at the racing form or the program? before the race or do you talk to the trainer or do you just go out there and wing it uh i look at the racing form and i watch it i i like to watch the replays the main thing for me is watch your replays yeah. I, I i love even if i know the horse i try to look it again just to make sure what i did last time if the horse is likely or not and of course i will go out and i will tell the trainer what i saw and if he is on the same page good and if they sometimes they do have something else to say that really helps about the horse mm -hmm. not really about the race but about the horse uh, yeah that's okay. what i do and i also i always do it at the same race day because if i do it day before or week i forget i might have <laughs> i'm i'm bad at it so i, I always do it at the race day <laughs> Join the okay. club. I, don't, I can't remember what I did yesterday. So that's okay. me. That's me too. Have you, have you had a lot of injuries? Have you had a lot of falls and that kind of stuff? Talking about being forgetful, because I know I fell in my head a lot of times and I forget a lot. What about you? Are you still pretty fresh of not getting injured? What? Well, what do you mean, sir? <laughs> no, well, Sean, you, Sean, Sean fell, fell on his head a couple times. <laughs> I didn't understand the. 
Sean, being a, pre no. uh, a previous have you, jockey. Have you, have, you, have you had any injuries from riding? Have you had any injuries? Oh, injuries. Yes, I did. Once yes. then, when I came, I did good with Wesley and uh, the connections and everything. So then we start, after Turf, we start Keeneland. And I start riding Keeneland, Indiana. And days off, I ride the Belterra. Then uh -huh. close here. And I, for, uh, the, uh, the second month of Indiana, uh, uh, Philly uh, fell off, crossing the ride with me. She, she just got tired and she fell off out of uh -huh. nowhere. She didn't stumble or anything. She just went straight to the ground. Yes. Wow. And, there, and I had a horse right behind me. Wow. And, and, that, and that day I, I fractured my, my back and uh, my foot, my right foot. And I was off for, uh, five, uh, no, for four months. That was not too bad. Wow. That was not uh -huh. too, could be worse. And then when I came back, of course, I didn't have the same business again. I didn't oh, have uh, yeah. the same support I had when I first got here. Wow. Uh, so I got another uh, Asian, and I started all over again. Indiana, Belterra, Indiana, Belterra. Some riders at uh, Kentucky, but not really much. Uh, I started yeah. Turfway again in the end of 2019. And I, I didn't go too good. I rode the uh, first week. I thought I was going to do good because I won like five five wins. I had five wins the first week for MACP. And I said, well, it's going to help me out to to go back for where I was in the beginning to, to get the uh, business back. It didn't really help. Uh, MACP, he didn't leave many good horses. That was just the first week, so then he took it all to Fairgrounds or Oakland. Fairgrounds and Oakland, yeah, that's those two places. He yeah, moved. and I didn't have had much business at that point, so I went to Ohio. I had a good agent in Ohio there. Oh, and then Doug Counts, that's the guy that trains next. He had a few horses at uh, Mahoney, Ohio. He asked me if I wanted to go there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, because he thought I would do better there with this creation. Uh, that, at that moment, it was Justin Poole. He's a really good Asian in Ohio. Now he's he's fighting for the title again with Jose Bracho. Okay. Yeah, and he's, he's, he was one of the best down to uh, over Ohio. And so then I started doing good again in Mahoney, Cleveland. I, I rode the summer in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Tissodon is the track. Yep. So I started at 2021. I had another injury. A horse went down with me by the turn in the Mahoney, and I had a, a surgery again on my collarbone. Wow. I didn't break uh -huh. it. But it's dislocated to the inside to my body, and I had a lot of damage mm -hmm. on my chest. I blood. Uh, that was. I had to take a time off again, another four months. Wow. When I started again, I started. But I didn't want to go back to, to. Mahoney. To Mahoney and Tissodon. That's away north to Ohio, so I yeah. started back in Belter. Yeah. So I got another Asian. I, I moved to Belterra because Justin was doing, he had more business up to to the north. And mm -hmm. I started all over again at Belterra and I was doing super good when I came back. Super good at Belterra. I was doing mm -hmm. three races a day. And the hell, and then I did, I moved to Kentucky again to Turf in the, in the winter of 2022. 2022 mm. in the holiday meet and I did good. I did super good. And so I got a, I moved, I, when this happened, my Asian, the, the guy that is my Asian right now. Corey. Corey, yes, Corey. He, he stopped, uh, 
stopped working with Carl Lannery and he was he had no jockey. And then I mm-hmm. called him, asking him if he would take my book. That was the end of Belterra to start Turfway. And he said, yeah, I think we can give it a try. I think you, you're writing good. Just let's try to work together. And he came over to Belterra next day. And we kind of took it to Belterra from, from Belterra to, to Turfway. And we ran third. And that was pretty good. Hmm. The first meeting together. And then we started yeah. doing good and doing better and doing better. Then next came, next help us to show off uh, yeah to to, <laughs> to everybody else the next step the, the next step with next, next. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we were taking it i mean we would take it and and then now we just got back to to leading writer okay That's so great. i'm glad i'm oh. glad you mentioned agent because the agent myself i mean i'm just looking at your stats you win the guy that finished second had 37. You win by 25 wins. You had a 700, I mean, a 173 months more than the, the guy second to you. How important your relationship with your agent and doing all the work that you're doing and choosing your horses are? I just want to hear it from you as a jockey because I know Corey does a great job for you and I have to shout out Corey while I'm here as an agent to an agent. So you just speak a little bit more about that because you've been to a few agents because of your injuries and you made moves and stuff like that. I mean, one of the main reasons you had to make the changes. But are your present agent right now, Corey, speak a little bit on him, please. Well, Corey, uh, when we start working together, uh, I didn't think he was gonna work the same way with me as he did with Corey Lannery because of my name. Because oh. I didn't have the name as Corey oh. Lannery. I didn't know if he was gonna try harder for me as he did with Corey. And that was wrong. Mm-hmm. That was just yeah. a thought. I never said that. But that was just a thought yeah. to me, to myself. I was wrong because he tried super hard every day of the of our time together he he is the guy that helped really helped me to get back here he's good i don't really i give all the all the he does it on his own he picks Credit. horses he have it only when it's similar he came and asked me so and when i have something else to say about a horse in particular i i let him know before it all happened so he's going to decide from there but he he did he did take some some good uh, he made some good moves to 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 make us to, to get here, and he is a super super friendly guy. Everybody likes him, mm-hmm. and I think it helps a lot mm-hmm. to try to be fair with everybody. And yeah, we go from there. In the yeah, he's the guy. He he put me here. He he took me to the next step. To the next level of racing. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't catch his. What's his name, what's Corey? What's his last name? Corey Pruitt. Pruitt, okay. Corey Very Pruitt. good. Now, you it's haven't, you haven't, you haven't been to Wood. Sorry, you haven't been to Woodbine yet, have you? No, I haven't. I haven't been in Woodbine. He's working on it. People are already asking if you're going to ride at Woodbine. He's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to come to Woodbine and ride? I, I would love to. I'd love to. And well, uh, you wrote, you've ridden a lot of horses for Mark Cassie at Turfway, right? I did. I did. I, I, Candy I Overload, do you want to stake on? Yeah, I would say that. Mm-hmm. I, I was going to say that name right now. A horse that is very familiar <laughs> for you guys at Woodbine. Yeah. How come, you <laughs> weren't on Candy, how come you weren't on Candy Overload when he came back the other day? Oh, so yeah. My agent had the other horse called a while ago for Bill Moore yeah. and he didn't know the horse was coming until the week of the entries. And he said, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, and our, the horse I rode was second choice, I guess. And yeah, and he was doing good. So, so then he gave us the call too, and we couldn't take it. We already had another uh, better award in the other, in the other horse. I just want to put in my little. I just want to put in my little piece and cute about this candy overload. Okay, that's the Vachi's call. Okay, so 
My job, right. yeah. So, so let you guys back up a little bit there. Don't don't get me too aggr- don't get me aggressive here now, okay? <laughs> so let's. <laughs> you won enough last year. It's time for you. It's time for you. We need to take a back seat now. It's enough already. It's a full uh, yes. horse driving. He's a full horse. He is. He is. He is. Yes. And the backside looks like he's running less. I like, know. With no shot. Yeah. Yeah. Three eight four. Uh-huh. He kind of gets you like. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's run third or four. Yeah, yeah. And then the butter pole will say, fuck, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm moving. He runs, I'm you, moving. He yeah. runs you over, man. He'll run you over that horse, man. He's something, no, man. No, He's it's, something. It's, yeah. it's fun to watch. And I was no, amazed what, that he won what, that race again off the layoff. Sorry. Yeah, no, but one time, North to send on. You are a real fine favorite, man. I mean, look at my man, Henry Miller said, very aggressive rider. Feel confident when I better horse with him aboard. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody loves let's you. Let's put some of the, let's put everybody. some of the comments up, Jen. How many you can put some of the, read, the, yeah. read some of the comments, Jen? Yeah. We so have one from, um, on Derek Lynch. Oh, Derek, Derek Lynch. Derek had one earlier. He's asking about. <laughs> Sean, Sean, that, this. Go ahead, okay. Jen. Derek Lynch says, uh, good night, everyone. Ask Luan what he thinks about Jao Magic Man Moreira, he's a Brazilian champion jockey. What do you yeah. think of him? Well, he's uh, <clears throat> when they started riding uh, as a, a French ride, that's the guy that everybody was using, uh, using as a mural. Everybody wanted to be like him, right? Was, at the moment, oh. he was uh, moving from, from Singapore to to. Well, from Singapore to Hong Kong, right? And he was a star. He was. He won uh, seven races in one day in in Hong Kong. He was wow. uh, bleeding right in there for I think I don't know I'm no, I don't know for sure but it's about for three years I guess. Wow! And everybody really in Brazil tries to, to ride like him. Very yeah. low in the saddle. Uh, very strong finisher in, and he used to be, and in Brazil they used to call him the 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 ghost. The ghost. The ghost <laughs> because he was out of nowhere. He was coming and getting. Oh, and then was, suddenly, okay, uh-huh. that's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah, well, you are very popular because then we've had um, Ned Hayes says that you won two races in a row for TEC Racing. Marty Drexler Crosstown Shootout. Oh, Does that yeah, sound that, familiar? Yeah, that's a horse I rode for Esquivel in the winter time here. I won, okay. I won three three times back okay. to back, mm-hmm. and uh, every time I got on him, it was a very uh, the race was getting tougher and tougher, and he was beating the guys like <laughs> it was very impressive for me. Oh, wow. Esquivel okay. did a good job wow. with that horse. The, the, well, on, va- the on Valentine's Day, he, yeah. he had eight months with Jen and he went and he went five of them. Huh? On Valentine's Day, you had eight months and you went five. Oh yeah. I did they no, but I have a few scratches <laughs> in that I had six months. <laughs> <laughs> five months. Very good. Oh, yeah. And and the last one was favorite, big favorite. And she ran last. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-oh. 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 I thought I was coming for six. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make it. Oh, so your horse is drawing off the off the all souls. Yeah. Okay. Well, Go we ahead. have uh, you also have some famous people watching you tonight. So uh, Jack Lozon, who's one of our fa- top jockeys, was one of our top jockeys at Woodbine when the Queen's Plate. He's in Kentucky right now getting ready for an autograph se- session at Keeneland on Saturday. And he's at Sandy Holly's house right now. And they're watching you on the Journey Show from Sandy Holly's house. We must wow. know Sandy Holly, I hope. Sandy Holly, the most famous Canadian jockey uh, and obviously one of the most famous jockeys in the world. And um, they're going to yeah. do an autograph session at Keeneland on Saturday. So. Well, you'll probably see them because you got lots of mounts Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, you're going to be busy there. Um, is there a horse you're looking forward to riding 
uh, Friday. I think you're riding in the Transylvania states, aren't you? I am. I am. I, it's a guy from. It's a horse from California. He's. A, he has been doing pretty good, and everything I rode for this guy uh, over the winter ran good. Uh, Doug O'Neill. Doug O'Neill. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and well, the, that's good. That's a, that'll be a nice race to win the Transylvania if you can get that job done. Yeah, it's a mile and sixteen the turf. Yeah. Um, this horse, I, I guess he just ran second last time out at Santa Anita. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, it looks like he's one of the contenders yeah. for sure. And I think the weather, I know it has been raining down there, right? But I think yeah. it's going to be better. Yeah, I think, I think in society you can get it good for, for the turf. I'm not sure about that. But that's a horse that, um, that I really like that day. Good. And, and also uh, in the last race, I got a maiden. The I ran second on her at Kentucky Downs. Okay. I ran third at Keeneland. And uh, I think she, if she get it right, she can win the race. She's on the one hole, my win, three sixteens on the turf. It's a long way to work it out, so I think she can she can get it right. Oh, this she, is a moon moonlight gambler. Okay. Yes, I, and she's eight to one right now. Oh yeah, look at that. So she, she, she can show up and she's a one of the one of my favorite mounts this Friday. Oh nice. Very so good. You're, you're pretty busy at, at Kingland in the morning now, Jack? Yeah, yes. I've been pretty busy. Uh no really busy as I was at Turfway, but uh I've been working a lot. I'm, tomorrow I gotta work here at six at Turfway. And okay. then and then I'm going to drive to Kenyan and I got another couple works at uh, seven thirty, seven and seven fifty, and then after wow. the break again at nine. So it's gonna be a good day for work. Nice. It was wow. pretty warm here, the Leroy, and it's yeah. getting colder again. It's supposed it's getting... to snow tomorrow. I I, <laughs> I know I got over there in time. I got some rain coming up the road though, but it was bad, man, and a big storm. We, you know, it was you pretty crazy. But, yeah, I drove home. Yeah, oh, I got in it. But it's only eight hours though. What do you mean only eight hours? <laughs> it's only eight hours. <laughs> 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 hey, what, what about Kimura? Kimura drove all the way to California. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He yep. drove to California. So I mean, it's only eight hours okay. from here. That that's a that's a short trip for me. And I drove, you know, I drove home earlier this year and went back down and came back home again. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So that's only eight hours. It was, you know, just got home two o'clock this morning. I came in this morning at two o'clock. Wow, eh? wow. That must be, you must be tired, bro. No, I'm good, man. I was up and ready to go again. I got up and called my job to make sure you go get his groceries because he had to leave down at Gulfstream and drove and drove to Palm Meadows to work horses this morning. Wow. Yeah, so I got up and get make sure that he was good to go and and everything. Take care of that. Oh, wow, they're busy, oh, wow. huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta keep it moving. Yeah, I got it moving. Yeah. So then he, he's got to get up and start. He start working horses tomorrow, at six o'clock tomorrow at Gulfstream. So you can keep him busy. He's got six horses to get on tomorrow. So I gotta keep I him busy. It. I love it. I love we it. We got hey, that's what you guys are paying us for, right? That's right. To get him busy, to get moving. <laughs> to get moving. <laughs> get us moving. Yeah. <laughs> but like we're talking about busy, man. Yeah, we're talking about Brazilian. You're a Brazilian writer. We had a good writer here, he rose Rico Rosa de Silva here, Brazilian. And you yeah, heard about him. And, and and we got we got um Leo Salas. But you know a lot about Rico. You heard about Rico, or are you not familiar with Rico Be Silver? He's no, Brazilian. I, I have heard a lot about him. Uh, okay. Heard about him. Mm -hmm. He's a he was a superstar at Woodbine for a while, huh? Yeah. 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 For no. a while. And uh, yeah, he won no. some big races too. And he had I a big fan base. Him. I never met him. No. There's a thing oh. that I, I want to do one day. I want to meet this guy. Yeah. He seems yeah. like a nice guy. I, I never yeah. met him. No, I can I can get his number. I got his well, number and everything. I can I can hook you up with him. Yeah, so, I mean, and you get to meet him. Does he still he live in the show little... already? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 he does. He has he has a um. What's he does, Jen? What does he does now, Jen? Jen? Um, speak to sports. Just... A life coach. He's a life oh. coach. Yeah, yeah. Life when we, I, I'll I'll give you a call and we can talk about it off air, John. 
Well, it's like, that would be great. <laughs> I'm just well, laughing. Yeah. I'm just laughing. Um, but I was going to show the floor to Derby um, before we let him go. And okay. I don't know how closely you're following the Derby horses. I mean, I know hopefully one day that you'll ride ride the Derby, maybe even this year. But I just wanted to show the floor to Derby and just because it's not that, I mean, it's not that interesting because the horse won by 13 lengths, but I thought we'd just show it and then maybe we can get our, our guests to, to comment on it. I don't know, Hammer, do you have the Florida Derby up there ready for us to take? Oh, that was quick. Yep. <laughs> I was ready for it. And you. now the 73rd Florida Derby. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Florida Derby. Fierceness was away perfectly from his outside draw. We'll use some speed to try to get over. Meanwhile, it's Grand Mo the first who's at the rail and in front with Ladombro right alongside. Fierceness, he's on the accelerator early as Johnny V. He's up and around horses and he wants to lead. So Fierceness will land the front in the run to the opening quarter. In between horses, Ladombro out three wide is Catalytic and Grand Mo the first is at the rail. They're followed by Real Macho who races outside of Hades. Hades is about three and a half lengths off the speed ahead of Iris's dream. Covered up between horses is Conquest Warrior and the early trailer is Frankie's Empire. The opening quarter just 24 seconds flat. Fierceness on his eight games so far. He's a length in front over Catalytic a wide second. In between horses, Ladon Bro Grand Mo the first is at the rail. Real Macho works out in the center, racing in front of Hades. Then Iris's Dream and Conquest Warrior still out the back, but in the clear is Frankie's Empire. They're with the half in 47 and 2. They have the favorite to catch. It's Fierceness to the far turn on top by a length and a half. Working harder is Catalytic at the rail. Grand Mo the first. Ladon Bro has to quicken, but he's not. At the rail, it's Conquest Warrior trying to launch his bid. Frankie's Empire is wide on the course, but Johnny V still sitting pretty on Fierceness who tries to sneak away. Three quarters, 111 and 1. They run to the 516th and Fierceness, he is getting away. He's now four in front. Catalytic is second. Grand Mo the first is third on the outside. Frankie's Empire, Conquest Warrior at the rail, but they all have too much to do. Fierceness is putting on a show in Hallandale today. Fierceness, the real Fierceness has showed up to South Florida and he's crushing them in the Florida Derby. Fierceness geared down and on his way to Louisville. Fierceness authoritatively in the Florida Derby. He never had a threat. Catalytic was second. It's a very close photo for third between Grand Mo the third <laughs> and Conquest Warrior. Oh my God. Hades to complete the high five oh in boy. 148 and one. Wow. <laughs> what do you want? So there you go. I don't know. I don't know how he's not favorite. Well, he'll <laughs> yeah, yeah. he'll be he'll be favorite in the Kentucky Derby. I think off of that 110 buyer figure, and you know it's just. I mean, but nobody behind him had any horse. I don't think at any time. And yeah, you know, they went 24, like yeah, 24, mm -hmm. 47. I mean, I don't know what to make of that. I really don't. I mean, it was really a, an in incredible race, like an incredible effort. And he ran fast, but he ran fast. And never, I would never really ask him. Huh? Yeah, but mm -hmm. you know, the... now my friend here, M Mary Louisa, says that she still doesn't like him in the Derby. I mean, it is twenty horses. Oh. Like, is he a horse that has to go to the lead and and run that way? And will he be able to do it? I mean, I don't know. He'd be a hard horse for me to bet on as the favorite in the Derby, but. Um, I guess that's a big dream of yours, one day to ride in the Derby, eh? Yo, that's one of them. Uh, uh, getting a horse and a good, uh, since the they started as a two years old and seeing all that thing, like getting better and better and qualify to a Derby, that, that would be a, a great thing to happen. I mean, it's one of the dreams mm. for sure. Well, it'll ha I'm sure it'll happen to you very soon. Uh, <laughs> you're on your way up and uh, you're doing very well. And it'll be fun uh, for all of us to cheer you on at Keeneland. And especially starting Friday with your horses. And Peter Gaskin, who's an agent and a horse owner, he, he says he has my vote. So he's cheering for you as well. So you get lots of fans Thank here you. tonight, Luan. Lots of fans. Thank you. I appreciate you guys yeah. for, the, for yeah. inviting me. Especially give people some tips also, man. You give some tips. <laughs> and people love you more. Yeah. <laughs>
All right. Well, yeah, we do have some yeah. some great spots to 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 work on it. So it's yeah. better than last year, of course. Last yeah. year, Keep and I, I had Keep. a few winners, and I didn't have as much as I have right now. So it's already better. That's great. Well, Coming off a championship, it gives you that confidence to go into Kingland too with you, you know what I mean? Which with that feeling that you can, you know, dominate us also because when you when you come off a a, a season like that, you can only, you know, excel further from there, right? And the great job your agent and yourself are doing together and the support that you have behind you, it can only get better from there, right? And the hard work. And you know what hard work does, right? It does give yeah. you that opportunity to to get there. Right. As I say, as I said in the beginning, when you do the right thing, that sooner or later the right thing is gonna go back to you. So there is no That's way, great. there is no wrong way doing this. No, no. Yeah. Doing the right. Yeah. And it's very, well, and I must say, it's very important, and it's very good. It's very important, and it's a very nice thing that you make some time for you know people like us doing a little shows to try and promote horse racing. So thank you again thank for you. for doing this for us. Thank you, guys. I, I really appreciate the invite. Leroy. Thanks, buddy. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, though. Thank, thanks, thank you. But meeting you was it was was great. I was so happy meeting you, and it was a pleasure, buddy. So hopefully ne next year, you know, we're back down there and we can get some business going. I want to be. I need to take a picture with in the winner's circle. Yeah, so we, we got. We need a picture on that wall. Yes, we do. Yeah. That's why we need that one. So again, Jock, I'm not gonna keep you up much longer. I don't want Corey calling me tomorrow and says, Leroy, you keep my jock so late and he miss his workers tomorrow. So because <laughs> he's got my number. So again, Jock, thank you so much. And to you and your family that came up and supported you and everybody. Thank you again, Jock. And keep up the good work, buddy. Thanks. We'll talk Leroy. again. All right, thank Thanks you. Again. Thanks, thank Sean. You. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. I see. Very I nice. see that. Yeah, I see. How much just put up today is the original Leroy's birthday. Yes, and he's watching. He said it's a my what you say. Yes. And when I got to scroll back here, he said, uh, "Oh my gosh, where'd it go?" Uh, celebrating a milestone today. It's my birthday. So the original Leroy Trotman, happy birthday, young man. Well, he turned 60 today. It's a milestone. He's got to be 60 then. Is he 60? Oh. Well, that's great, man. 60, Get in there. Man. That's one wonderful, man. Teams is original. Oh, wow. same thing. Yeah. Wait, where's where's Mr. Dunzo tonight? Yeah, Ricky sings said happy birthday. He's not even chatting. So, wow. Hammer, you didn't see Mr. Ha Mr. Mr. Dunzo tonight? He didn't, he gone back on the vets list again? No, he's 61. <laughs> Oh, 61. Wow. 61. Okay. So, Jen, talking about that derby thing, though, right, with, with Mr. Um, Buffett's horse, I think I was just going to ask you a question off the thing. With that horse, knowing that horse is not going to go into derby, right? The horse that won the Arkansas Derby, Moose? Yeah. He's not, okay. is he allowed? He's not allowed in, is he? He's not allowed, but, of course, today's news was the owner of the horse uh, filed a lawsuit um, to uh, try and get something going here to allow the horse to race. So, I mean, I don't know what that's going to do, uh, you know, four weeks or three weeks out, three and a half weeks out. But uh, there is some sort of movement by the owner. But Moose is not allowed to run currently. He's, he's being pointed to the Preakness, you know. So whatever happens with this lawsuit, I don't know. But. Oh, okay. He no, was because... pretty impressive. I mean, I, I got to say, Moose was pretty impressive. And um, while his, you know, he, he didn't run a 110 buyer figure, but, you know, no, but... He, was, he was under pressure and then drew off. He looks like a pretty darn good horse. Yeah, no, um, that's what I was saying, yeah. But we have three big ones, three big races this weekend. Well, I mean, definitely the bluegrass is um, a serious um, derby prep. We have two of the favorites uh, going against each other, Doorknock and Sierra Leone. And of course, Doorknock won the Fountain of Youth. That was that mm -hmm. race that was the, the small field. Yeah. And he led all the way and he went slow and ran a 90 fire. So that's okay. And he's won three races in a row. That's for trainer Danny Gargan. And then Sierra Leone is Chad Brown's horse, the horse that came from way off the pace in the slop to win the uh, Risen Star Stakes at Fairgrounds. 
and he's been training at Payson Park, um, and Tyler Gaffleone rides him. So those two have um, a great chance in the bluegrass, but it's an 11 horse field. And you know, I wanted, you know, what I meant to ask Luan this question because, and maybe you could answer it, you guys, because there's a couple of horses in there that are really good horses, but they've only raced at Turfway on Tapita. And now they're, and they've won stakes. So it's epic. We're talking about the bluegrass, we're talking about in the bluegrass. Yeah. Yeah, and they're going now to the Bluegrass. Encino and Epic Ride, both really good horses on the Tapita, but they've never run on dirt. How do betters approach these horses now um, going from Tapita to dirt? But, Jen, like you mentioned the other day, when you look back at the record of horses that went on, on the poly and went on to do good in the Derby too, though. Yeah, I mean, not too many, but, the, yeah, they've done okay, yeah. Yeah, Rich Strike ran at Turfway and then won the Derby. Yep, Animal no, Kingdom. No. Yeah, and but and the old the, the sorry, not sorry. Go ahead, Jen. You go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say that like that these two horses are, you know, like Epic Ride uh, was second in the Bataglia to Encino, which is so Encino is the Brad Cox Godolphin horse that's won two races in a row, and he won the Bataglia at Turfway. Now he has a he has an awful post at Keeneland, but. I just wondered, like, you know, what do you do with these horses that have never we tried? Say, we say as horse people, though, good horses run on, with the ground on glass bottle. Yeah, that's true. But what odds oh. would you take to oh, find out if they okay. run on the glass okay. bottle? <laughs> good question. This good question. question. Yes. <laughs> good question. So the bluegrass is at Keeneland. Then you have a huge field in the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct. And that race is a crapshoot. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, and the Wood Memorial has really not produced a very good horse for quite a long time. Used to be the big race, too, for the Derby, eh? Before yeah. I had all these other prep races, the Wood Memorial, you know, was for horses like, you know, the Reba Ridges and the Secretariats and all that. And then I haven't looked at um, Santa Anita, I believe, is the Santa Anita Derby, but... I don't much know. You're not getting much competition down there. So, oh, there's eight horses there. Okay, so we've got a couple. So we have some Baffert. So let's see. who's we got a horse by the name of Stronghold by Ghost Zapper, who won the Sunland Derby. Trainer Phil D'Amato. So I guess he'll, he'll take some interest. But, yeah, right now it sort of looks like the Baffert horses will be favored there. And they won't be able to run in the derby run, anyway. Run again, yeah. And the other question for you, like, you know, that horse, Buffer horse running the other day, say the horse that finished second then had enough points to get into the derby. Now you got a horse that ran in the win that race that is not allowed to go in the derby. That take, takes away the points from the horse that, that finished second. I was, yeah. we, we, were, we were having a discussion with that at Turfway the other day among the trainers at Under Rail the other morning, you know what I mean? How fair is it that that horse is not allowed to go? Oh, no, and wait a minute. No, no, no. Moose doesn't get any points. The Baffert horses don't get points. So, um, so okay, so he doesn't, that's even makes it quite even more um thing that he doesn't get no points, but the horse that finished second has to get second horse points. Yeah, you're saying maybe he should get first place points. Points, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's a reasonable point, actually. I mean, that, that is, I mean... They should, if they're treating Moose like he doesn't actually exist as far yes, as the yeah. Kentucky Derby, yeah. then the horse that was second to him, who I can't, oh, Just Steel, Wayne Lucas's horse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, do you give him 100 points because he ran second, beaten five lengths? I don't and, know. And, and saying that he didn't had he didn't have enough points to go into Derby and he finished second. Yeah, what well, that would, would be what, yeah, you know so that, it, that would be bad. So that, that, that's so, all I'm looking I mean, at it from. Look what they're saying now. They're saying that this horse that the, so Kazushi Kimura was announced this morning that he was riding. He's riding To Password in the Kentucky Derby, and To Password is a horse that's run two times. He's won a little dinky wow. race, and then he won this little Fukuruo Stakes. He's won forty points, so he's won the Road to Japan, and don't. Don't consider the other horse uh, forever young because he's Japan, but he doesn't factor into this. Road to Japan has four races, and whoever wins the most points there gets an automatic invitation to the Derby. This horse, Teal Password, won 40 points. He gets an automatic 
pass to the Derby. Now, I, I mean, I could be way off base here, but I mean, the source has run twice and doesn't look like, I mean, he just won a mile and eighth race, like, and he was gasping for air at the end of it. But he's got 40 points from winning two dinky races in, or one dinky race in Japan, <laughs> and is going to make horses not get in that are racing wow. here. So there's already people sort of, you know, wondering about that. Um, so, you know, the system is not perfect. The Derby points, it's not perfect. I think it's okay, but um, a lot of people would say that it's, it's flawed. So uh, it, Santiago Gonzalez says it would look bad on the Kentucky board if Bafford was to win four of the top preps and none of the horses are allowed <laughs> to run as race. Well, that's, facts, I mean, that's that's the truth, though. Churchill Downs, uh, you know, did they are they dragging this out too long? Did they really, you know, ban him again this year because they didn't want that to mess up their 150th year of the Derby celebrations? That would be pretty bad, if you ask me. I don't know. But again, we're talking with a trainer. Here's a horse, and here's owners that are invested so much into the game and have horses that you know, are good enough to go in the race and probably run in the first four that can't are not allowed to go because of the ban Churchill is putting on a trainer and not thinking about the owners. Yeah. No, I mean, I agree. Damien Simpson thinks the Bafford horse will run, though, but, I mean, I don't know. Uh, that's only I, a thought. I want to see a lawsuit, like, three weeks before the Derby. I mean, any court system that I'm familiar with, Nothing works in three weeks. I mean, maybe three years, but, you know, what are they going to yeah. suddenly drop everything and, and you know, work through this lawsuit and suddenly change everything? Like, what are the other people going to say in the Derby, horses in the Derby? Like, oh, all of a sudden now this Baffert horse can run? I mean, I, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, no, it's a bit of no. a mess. But, no, and then if he comes, he runs and he comes and wins, what's the, it's going to get the eh? worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're not disturbed. We're not the horse racing committee, not nothing like that. So we leave that to those guys' hands. Okay, we'll just yes. follow their, follow what they're doing and have our shows on what they're saying, what they do. Now, um, Hammer wants to show. I don't know what this means. Wesley Cave. Well, oh, Wesley Cave. He's a Barbadian guy. He won a race in Australia. So we we, we got to give him some some props, man. He's Halfway around the world okay. and he's winning races in Australia. Okay, how old would he Where's be? The cave? How old I think would he, he be, might sure? be about 28, 20, 20, between 28 and 30. He'd be riding okay. for a little while now, but he'd be riding. He won in Australia. Well, I, he's the second Barbadian to win a race in Australia, which I was the first. And he did it about a couple of years ago. But he's oh, so he was with, with the COVID, you know. What I mean, he wasn't in Australia. Now he's got back down there, and he's you know he's doing pretty good, man. So, so did he ever write in Barbados? Did he ever write in Barbados? Yeah, he would write in Barbados, and he was doing right. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he didn't get much opportunities in Barbados, and and he went to he was doing really well in in I think in Guadeloupe and Martinique and those places down there in the French Islands. And then a friend of ours, a Barbadian guy. Caleb got him to Australia because he lives, he's a Barbadian living in Australia, got him, you know, helped him to get his papers and stuff. And now he's back down there doing very well. He's won two races already for the year. Wow, that's great. Okay, well, if Hammer's got it, queue him up, buddy. Let's see what we got. Yeah, let's go. Hammer says, not me, Hall. Not you. <laughs> so he doesn't have it. Then. Oh, right. Okay, Oh. And uh, missing at a shade, Tara Rani. No speed, misguided choice. Really? Suzuki Magic began fast. True Gems yeah, got the yeah, rail, and up there to Wardana splitting out. that pair. Back in fourth there was Dark Helmet. So, two on the outside. Two you, on the outside. Zero. So fourth. Yeah. Fourth, yeah. Fourth, yeah. From fourth from the back. Fourth from the back on the outside. Guest and Tara Rani no, second last. A misguided choice. She won't go. She's seven lengths oh. away. Muki Magic ran to the lead okay. now. And she, he's, uh, she sped clear by three lengths past the six. In second now, Wardana. 
Nana. True Gem moves to the outside. Five lengths away then to Nina Jura, Seminara, Dark Helmet, Tara Rani. Some of these can't even see the leaders. They're flying here, 400 to go. Amuki Magic had the lead approaching the bend. Favourite True Gem's about to peel off of its back and run on. Then came Wadana, Seminara, and also Nina Jura poking through. They turn the bend here, and on the inside, they straighten up. The leader, Amuki Magic, True Gem's got to it, and True Gem now forges clear. Wadana runs on, Seminara from the back. True Gem's in front. It's doing enough. I mean, no, True Gem hanging the same on. Thing. True Gem. True Gem wins. Second Wadana. Tara Rally rocketing home. Might have grabbed third wow. from Dark Helmet. And it's a, a small magic, track. Hungry guest. Yeah, a lot of people, man. With her. Got a big crowd. Uh, next in came Seminara. Watch, Nina is Jura Australia, dropped down man. a bit. Very popular. And wow. uh, last in was Miss Guy Choice. Oh, that's good, Sean. Very like tracky, man. Is. Mm -hmm. I want to... Um, just Upside speaking down of Australia, yeah. okay. hang on a second. Just speaking of Australia, well, yes. I want to show this young man. Is this working? Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. This is the guy who passed right, away. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Stefano yeah. Churchy, twenty-three, yeah. who has been in a coma for a couple of weeks, passed away, and uh, he was injured, uh, head injury in the uh, in Australia. Wow. You know, just a really sad story. A lot of great... jockeys get dying in Australia, man. Yeah. A lot of jockeys yeah. die in Australia. Well, I, I, I don't know because there's so much, I don't know, a lot of racism or what. Let's, let's send out our condolences to his family. Wow. family. Wow. And uh, his yeah. girlfriend, who is uh, Kieran Fallon's daughter, um, had had flown there not too long ago, a few days ago, to be by his side. So, um, wow. Wow. Yeah, very tough. And I, you know, I, I found it very freaky that I, you know, I, the resemblance between him and Sahin is a bit shocking. <laughs> really, yeah. I mean, he looks like Sahin in a way, just a young man, and you know, just, just awful. So, um, that's too bad. So there, uh, YPG boss said the jock used to ride for Eddie Bell. Is that we're talking about Wesley Cave, I guess? Yeah. Oh, oh yes, 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 yeah, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah, that's what that's what I posted yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. Eddie Bell, that trainer had posted on Facebook about that kid, Jen. That's okay. Eddie Bell. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, now yeah, when yeah, I was reading type today type about, type. sorry, there's a nice story about Antonio Whitehall that I'm going to be putting up uh -huh. on uh, Canadian Thoroughbred because. Um, He's obviously, I noticed there's pictures of him all bundled up because it looks pretty cold there in Winnipeg. Yeah, I see that. I see there's a couple of guys over there galloping horses right now, getting ready to for yeah, the meet. Yeah. And but I also cool noticed there. they were talking about um, another bug rider. Um, from, from Barbados? I think so. I'm just trying to see yeah, here. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a couple. I think there are like three guys that went over there or something like that, that came up. They bought, they bought quite a few bags, yeah. About three of them. Rashad Knight. Rashad Knight. Rashad yes. Knight. Yes. Yes. Who's been getting on horses? So they've been talking about him and uh, Antonio Whitehall. So yeah, that's um, hopefully we'll get to see Antonio on our show. Marianne again well, says she agrees. Up to now, so I don't know. Oh. Marianne agreed. She said when she saw the picture of uh, Stefano, she thought it was Sahin. So that's uh, okay. pretty. Ugh. So, yeah, that's okay. um, that's how it Funny is here. Period. So you're obviously back in town, uh, Leroy. You made it yes. back okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just getting busy. Well, I'm you know, doing my homework, and I'm booking rice to Patrick at Gulfstream. So I've been talking to a few trainers, hoping, you know, right now, Mark and Safi's supporting us the most right now and just trying to uh -huh. reach out to some other trainers. I talk to trainers at Turfway and stuff like that. So try to see if we can, you know, get some more business before we head back up here and get him going. Leroy, I see Jack. Yes, sir. Jack Sean asked a question here. He says, Sean, who's that guy that was down in Barbados that had associations with Rich Strike? Is that, does he mean, is that Jim, Jim Perry? He means Jim Perry, man. I think he means Jim Perry. Jack, I think you got, you mean Jim Perry. That's Ken Ramsey's yeah, yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, Ken Ramsey's guy. 
Yeah, I was trying to understand, remember, but I now remember Jim, Jim we used to move without horses too, Jim Perry. Yeah. Well, so Jack is- sorry. Hello, Sandy. Yeah, so Jack and Sandy are, are doing autographs on at uh, Kingland on Saturday? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So they wow. said they were going to go great. and say hello to Luan in uh, the jocks room, so. I couldn't. I couldn't get a I get an idea whether Luan had ever heard of Sandy Holly or not. So I just kept talking. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I yeah, because he's he's he, no. I think he's only been in four four years in the country. So I guess he wouldn't yeah. hear too much about Sandy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so so he's still 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 young in the game. Yeah, in the business he's still young in the game. Yeah, Jocko well, said oh, that's him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He was getting confused there. Yeah. Well, so, He's in Kentucky to... also, man. He's a Kentucky guy. Yeah. Perry. Well, that's good to know Sandy's uh, that, that Jack is down there with Sandy too, doing doing that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. Well, they Where's just had one of those, they had one of those days at Oakland recently. Sandy was there and Angel Cordero and uh oh gosh, a whole bunch of them, and it was really neat. It was really like mm -hmm. I just watched it on the TV and they had all the different riders from over the years after every race. So, yeah, it's really so. Uh, so there's a particular picture that they're signing, Jen. What are they? What are they signing? I don't know. I just I was just going by what, what Jocko was saying. Jocko, inform us a little bit, buddy, because we need one. If, if it's something a nice picture of those guys signing, I would love to have one of those pictures to put up in my office. Well, of course, Bruce Badu is there. Bruce Badu is everywhere that Sandy is if there's a big race going on somewhere. Of course he's there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Wesley Cave is 45 years wow. old. His first win was in Canada. Wow. Holy mackerel. Whoa, what? 45. Why can't be so old? What? <laughs> that old? I shouldn't Wait. say that's old because I'm slightly older than that. No, but I mean, if you see the guy, the guy looks like he's in his twenties, man. <laughs> well, that's great, Leroy. Oh. I will do that if possible. Okay, so thanks, now, Jack. Uh, Jack yeah, so we have to stick to training on the. Well, I, they couldn't train this morning at Woodbine. Well, at least some of no? my friends. Didn't. No, they're too even, windy. Even oh, it was too windy. Too windy. No training today. Oh, but it wasn't that, down this side. It wasn't that windy down here. I went with my son to, to school this morning, and then it wasn't that windy. And I went and got a few things done. We and we drove up to Costco to get gas, and it wasn't that wow. But it was heavy windy early then. Morning, it was like I thought my roof was gonna blow off. Wow, it was very crazy weather. Crazy weather. But no. anyways, I'm excited to watch Keeneland and Derby preps and. I'm excited. Oh, training opens on Sunday at Ajax Downs. Oh, there. And um, we have our thoroughbreds versus quarter horse races right in the first condition book. So every day. So I'm hoping that Fort Erie people will uh, consider sending a horse up to us to race early. When in the is season. this starting there, Jen? Uh, May 8th. Oh, Wednesday, May 8th. So training begins this Sunday. So, oh, thank goodness we get back to work. And uh, Woodbine, <laughs> Woodbine has a nice little get together for all the horse people this Friday at 9 30 in the morning till wow. one in the backstretch kitchen with free sandwiches and stuff like wow. that. And you can uh, meet and talk with some of the management there if you wish. But it's a little backstretch uh, party as it were on Friday morning at 9 30. Have you, have you seen Steve Lim as yet, Mr. Lim? No, he's not starting. He's still tying up things in Florida, and um, it'll be um, it'll be May before he um, takes yeah. his place here at the HBPA. Um, Peter Gaskin says he was training at the track today. My son Tyler got on at least six. Yeah, it had to be. I didn't hear nothing about no track closing. Well, no, it wasn't closed. I just said most oh. people didn't train because it was too Oh, busy. most people didn't. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. okay. Woodbine gets all the fun stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> they also deal with a, lot of, a, with a lot of not fun stuff. So I think once in a while it's nice that the horse oh. people get a little bit of fun stuff. But, yeah, 
So Steve Lim, yes, um, taking over as executive director of the uh, Ontario HBPA. So he'll uh, play an important role, uh, you know, as, you know, dealing with what does that, what does that, what does that, what, what, what would he be doing? Like what? Talking with Woodbine um, about race dates, uh, whatever issues going on. He'll do whatever Sue Leslie was doing in that capacity. Sue Leslie's still going to, she's not going anywhere. She's still the president. Um, but um, she needs, a, you know, some of the work taken off of her um, plate. Yeah. And, uh yeah, so he'll be doing just a lot of stuff uh, with the HBPA. He'll be so, sitting in the office and doing office stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. So he'll be, he won't be out on the grounds too much then? Well, I... Something like Danny Vella was doing there? A little bit Danny of... Danny Vella's still doing that, so that okay. works for Woodbine. So, no, I don't know. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess he'll be out and about a bit, um, fielding all the HBPA, you know. You get a lot of complaints when you work for the HBPA. So, <laughs> you're listening to a lot of complaints. The one thing we want we want to get this more happen. I mean, I know, and I know they are trying to get help for the for the, the you know the trainers and stuff, which everybody's crying for right now. So he's going to be working like on that kind of stuff, you know, getting people, yeah. you know, to be able to get across the border. Like he's going to have a lot of that kind of stuff to work on. Um, it's it's a very you know. It's not easy um, representing the horse people. You know, you got to try and make everybody happy and you have to solve a lot of issues and problems. And um, But so far, everything's been going fairly smoothly. 129 race dates this year. Um, you know, the stakes races are pretty much intact. You know, I, I know that a lot of the grade, graded stakes all lost, you know, $15,000, $20,000 in purses. Yeah. But um, there's still plenty of money to go around. Yeah, but I've seen a lot of horses are folded and right. stuff like what? that. Sorry? Oh, oh real, the real pairs of back stretch is on, man. I'll be busy with buying soon. All right. Your guy, Leroy. Uh, yeah, there you go. Like I said, I'm you know, yeah. representing, man. I'm representing. You know, represent his hat, man. Represent the man. The man, the man, the man, set, the, man, the man set me up. The man set me up the hats. You know what I mean? The man took care of me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. The real players. Yeah. yeah, and I got the bag. I got the bag right yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. We you know what I mean? Fire you know. Yeah, brother. And and he's doing great. He's doing great work for the game too. You know, making sure he's exposed no the, the yeah. people of, of the back stretch. You know what I mean? And then he's got something big working on, yeah. and he's gonna come and join us here as soon as he get his stuff put together and, and get things going. So yeah, you know what I mean. So we're all playing our part in this game to try and keep it alive and keep it going. You know what I mean? This game means a lot to yeah. a lot of us, mm -hmm. you know. And you know we don't want to leave leave the right all the people out that is doing a big part in it. Everybody's asking where's Mike? Mike? Mike yeah, is on I know. I've tried to answer. Under. We don't know where Mike is. Mike so. is back on the bet list. Love you Again. too, my brother. <laughs> love the show, yeah, love guys. You. Love we, you. Love your, we love your show. We love your show too, man. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. To, I loved uh, the interview we did with Bev Chubb one year. That was really great, you know. So, and uh, and Juan Crawford. So yeah, hopefully yeah. I'll I'll meet that group of real players. When they yeah, come he'll up be back. Yeah, mine. Come back to Port Woodbine. No, he does a great job, man. He does a wonderful job. Interested to see how is his when Saratoga opens up. How is he going to be down there doing stuff too? You know, so and those old school guys, man, I love watching those old school guys talking about the game. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the good old days. Yeah, the good old days. You know, it's not going to go back that yeah. way, but you know, it's good listening to those guys because those are the guys that we came upon there, right? And learn so yeah. much from. You know, you gotta gotta work. All, yes. All right, bigger, bigger. Big was asking how much rice, um, how much milk Patrick has this weekend. So he's got one Friday, two Saturday, two Sunday, and then we'll, you know next week we're working on the others next week. So we get in there. Okay, okay. that's good. Yeah. Now, just uh, I, I got a little personal. I got a little personal note from Carrie. Carrie Duggan here. She said that her hubby Brian was at Keeneland, and uh, she's sort of been my little. He's been my little spy and saying that. 
Mighty Heart, who uh, has not missed a work in a couple of months, and now is at Keeneland with the trainer Jonathan Thomas. Oh, no. Oh, I see. That Turfway's working at Keeneland. Oh. oh okay. Because yeah. I noticed these last two works have been at Keeneland, but uh, I guess he's stable. You know, and Jonathan Thomas has, has stalls here at Woodbine, as he normally does, with uh, Katerina Vasilieva. Yeah. You know, I just want the horse to come back to Woodbine, for heaven's sake. <laughs> but of course, I'm being a spy, I looked at the condition book for Churchill and saw that on Derby Day there was a little uh, overnight thing that I thought, uh-oh. Maybe he's going to go in there on the dirt, but boy, I'd love to see him in the in something here back at Woodbine. But anyways, fingers crossed for Mighty Heart. When he comes back to the races, I'll get out all the books I have left and try and sell some more. Okay, that'll be great. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, since we're not, no, no mic tonight, so we the fun the fun part of our show tonight, guys. We let's apologize for for Mike and. Hopefully that he's okay. We haven't heard nothing, but hopefully he's yeah. okay. Yeah, hopefully he's okay. Hi. I mean, I heard him during the week. You talked to him during the week? I heard Mike during the week. Yeah. He sent me a message. Oh. Oh, like I said, I hope he's okay. I mean, guys... Probably slept through or who knows. Good night, kids. Lovely <laughs> seeing you all again overnight from Kentucky. Yeah, Jocko, on. you have a good time down there. Yeah, Hope you and Sandy have a great day down there, too, and every, all the best, buddy. It's nice hearing from you, and keep supporting the the journeys. Yeah. We talked to oh, Mike today. Yeah, he we talked to Mike, and he'd be on. Well, well yeah. Okay, That's all well, right. We'll catch up with him next week, and I want yeah. everybody to watch those derby Preps this weekend, and we'll talk all about them, who, who's yeah. our pick for the Derby because that'll be it. These three races, and then we'll get the field going. Yeah, and you know we can talk a little bit about Woodbine because I yeah. see a, the worksheet is starting to overload load with horses and some nice horses. I see some nice works on some nice horses out there. You know, the, you know the the person I'm keeping a big eye on is Kevin Attar because I've seen a lot of his horses working, man, and he like he's gonna have some nice fresh horses coming up too. So yeah. be interested to see the kind of year he's going to start off with. You know, he took the winter off and stuff like that. So paying attention to all the good things that are happening. So, and I know every week they've got more and more horses coming up. Oh, so. I should know, make note that the Queen's Pl King's Plate, or one of the King's Plate favorites, my boy Prince, makes his three-year-old debut on Sunday at Keeneland in the Palisade Stakes at five and a half furlongs on the grass. So you see a horse that'll be probably champion two-year-old Colt in Canada at the uh, Sovereign Awards, which are coming up Thursday, April 18th. So I hope everybody has their tickets, and we'll uh, we'll we'll see uh, everybody at the Sovereign Awards on the 18th. Mm -hmm. Josh, the 18th. He's working on the Gold Rush. The Gold, gold Rush. Oh, 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 the Gold Rush. Oh, oh, the Gold Rush. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you got to get a bottle of sand for us. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Oh, good. Okay, okay boys. guys. All right. So, hey, yep. thanks everyone for coming out, and thanks for our, our, our leading writer from um, Turfway Park for coming out yep. and joining us and sharing his, you know, his journey with us, and hopefully he can mm -hmm. continue his success at Kingland and carry on from there. Yeah. And his dream one day will come true, getting that Derby horse that he's dreaming of and yeah. wish him all the but, success but everybody i speak to say he's the next big thing man well that's, everybody wants to dream like that everybody wants to be big you gotta be you gotta think and feel that's that way you know? remind me of rafael hernandez too i felt like i was talking to rafael <laughs> wow well, no he seems no that was good, good man. he's great thanks wow. everybody for watching yeah. thank you all right. Okay, guys. All right. So, Good night, everybody. And we'll see you guys everybody. on the next journey. And we're out of here. Out of yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs>
our way together is all about enhancing the guest experience from the hotel to exploring everything the destination has to offer. Our way together brings the culture and the history of a location alive to the traveler who is seeking to immerse themselves in a truly authentic local experience while on vacation. Journeys is sponsored by the Horseman's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario, which represents thoroughbred owners and trainers and their hardworking employees at Woodbine and Fort Erie racetracks. The HPPA represents horse people's interests in all issues pertaining to thoroughbred racing. The HPPA's goal is for the betterment of racing at all levels, from medical and pension plans to negotiating with government and racetrack operators. Your HBPA is at the forefront of all issues important to members. Please visit the HBPA at hbpa.on.ca or on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, HBPA Ontario. The next race day at the Garza Savannah will be the 13th of April. Bring your family and enjoy a day of racing! <laughs>